Jerry of the Circus. for Jerry of the Circus. There it is, Rags, all finished. Oh, I see. You want me to send your personal regards to me. Okay, now the envelope. Mr. Richard Grayson, Jackson City Trust, and Savings Bank Building, Jackson City. <laughs> now what? Isn't that right? <laughs> oh, I see. It's Patsy. <laughs> Hiya, Patsy. Hello, Jerry. The rags, old fellow. <laughs> Is the show over already? <laughs> you don't hear any music, do you? Oh, I was so busy, I, I didn't pay any attention. Oh, what are you so busy with? I just wrote a letter to Mr. Grayson. Remember, I, I told him I'd write to him and tell him all about his father. Well, good for you, Jerry. Say, do you want me to mail the letter for you? Well, can I walk over with you? Mm -hmm. You surely can if you want to. Come on. Okay. Come on, Rags. <laughs> I have to send some money home to Mother. Where is the post office, Patsy? Jim Bennett tells me he's just across the street from the back end of the lot. It'll only take us a minute to walk over there. Well, how do your new trick go today? I'm sorry, but I forgot to watch. I got so interested in writing this letter to Mr. Grayson, I didn't even think. Oh, you didn't even remember that you were one of my best fans. I'm really ashamed of you, Jerry. Well... I won't forget tonight, though, honest. I, I won't take my eyes off you all the time you're up on the track. <laughs> oh, that's the boy. Well, Jerry, what do you know? Oh, nothing. Well, I heard you were in on all the excitement with Gertie this morning. Golly, wasn't that awful? Well, I didn't hear much about it. What all happened? Well, the reason Gertie went mad and ran around and acted so wild was because she had that powdered tobacco in her eye. You mean snuff? Yeah, and that burned something awful. I imagine it does. Olsen thinks Zeke put it in her eye. Now, it looks like he's right, because Zeke skipped the show. Hmm. They haven't been able to find him anywhere. I'm sure it was a mean trick to torture Gertie that way. He's such a nice old elephant, too. Zeke's been teasing Gertie for a long time. And the other day, when Gertie tipped that wagon over and pretty nearly got Zeke caught under it, it made him pretty mad. Well, he had it coming. Elephants are a peaceful animal, and they make wonderful friends. But just start to aggravate them, and they can be dangerous enemies. Olsen said Zeke probably figured Gertie would appear as though she'd gone wild and turned into a killer, and then have to be shot. I'll bet that's right. I just can't understand a man that would stoop so low. I guess he wasn't very important, because it sure didn't take Mr. Murray long to fill his job. Well, what do you mean, Jerry? He hired another man to take his place right away. Oh. It's a man that was hanging around looking for work. Well, there's always plenty of men ready to join up with the circus, and every time we play. This man that took Zeke's place is sure funny, though. He acts kind of nervous, and his eyes keep moving back and forth real fast. What do you make of that? Um, I don't know. Oh, maybe he's just upset about getting a job. Most likely he's been out of work for a long time. Maybe. Uh, hey, look, there's Jason. Hello, Jason. Hiya. Well, hello. Wow, what are you doing? Oh, just checking up in some of the cages with a carpenter here. Well, hello, Rags. <laughs> I thought maybe you were building an ark. Well, I'll have to if you continue to flood me with jokes. <laughs> oh, my, what a flow of wit. <laughs> no fooling, though. What are you doing? Just what I said. 
I'm having the carpenter check up in some of the cages. We do that every once in a while just to make sure they're good and strong. Did Gertie do any damage to them when she went on the rampage? Well, I don't know. That's one reason I'm having them looked at today. It's better to be safe than sorry. I guess it would be awful if the lion or tiger got out of his cage and got loose around the lot and then ran down the main street of the town. I've heard of that happening a few times, but luckily it never happened to me. Greg, Greg, get away from that cage. Now you better go get him, Jerry. He's barking at Fuzzy. I guess he'd like to get eaten with Fuzzy for hurting his leg. Now, never mind. You and Fuzzy aren't going to mix anymore. Yes, you heard me. You're right, Jerry. Those two were never meant to be pals. Isn't Fuzzy growing fast? My goodness, he just shoots up more every day. He won't be a cub much longer. Have you taught him any more tricks? Oh, a few. I've got him used to taking orders now. You mean without giving him some meat as a reward? Mm -hmm. You said you thought he'd be so hard to manage. Do you still think so? Yes, I do, Patsy. That little fellow has a mind of his own. But he'll be a good performer when you finally get him trained, won't he? Yes, I think I can call on him to put on a good show, all right. <laughs> Funny how some young lions have more spunk than others. You know, my father once told me of a lioness that was just as tame as a house cat all its life. I've seen cats like that, but I prefer to, prefer to work with the spunky ones. They put on a better show, and after all, that's what the audience wants to see. Sure, if all your animals minded you and did all their tricks without fighting back, there wouldn't be much to your act at all. Hmm, I guess that's right. Hmm, it is right. Folks pay their money to see something exciting and dangerous in the steel, so that's what I try to give them. You put on a good show every time you go into the steel. Oh, don't tell him any more, Jerry. He likes to hear things like that. Oh, I suppose you don't like to hear something nice about your work. She sure does. When I tell her how good her act is, she smiles and her eyes sparkles and <laughs> even blushes. <laughs> there you are, young lady. <laughs> you could give me away, Jerry. <laughs> Where are you two heading for? Oh, Jerry and I are going over to the post office. I'm going to mail this letter to Mr. Grayson. Getting a letter off to Mr. Grayson like you promised, hmm? Uh-huh. Did you send him my regards? Sure. I said everybody sends a regard. Well, I guess that's good enough. That takes me in, too. Let's get going, Jerry. We can't stand here all morning and tell Jason how good he is. He won't be able to work this afternoon. <laughs> oh, I think I can take it. <laughs> okay, Jason. Come on, Jerry. Here, Rags. See you after a while. <laughs> okay, well, so long. Goodbye, Jason the Great. <laughs> Why do you kid Jason like you do, Patsy? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I like to. He's so good-natured about being kidded. Yeah, he sure is swell. You know, Jerry, he's one of the nicest men I've ever trooped with. You know, everybody's nice in this circus. Yes, they are. But that goes pretty much for every circus. After the show is out on the road a few weeks and all the folks get to know each other, it's just like one big family. That's just the way I feel about it. <laughs> yes. You made a lot of friends, Jerry. And even when new people join the show, well, like the Bendinis, it isn't any time at all until you feel like you've known them all your life. Well, look, Jerry, there's the post office across the street. Better watch Rags when we cross here. I'll pick him up and carry him. Here, Rags. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that bump jumping to your arms. Oh, that's cute. He likes to be carried across the street. And do you know, he'll never cross the street by himself. <laughs> well, here we are. Down you go, boy. <laughs> nice looking post office, isn't it? It surely is for a town this size. Go ahead, Jerry. You open the door. You're the gentleman, you know. Okay. Ladies first. Thank you, sir. Here, I'll go over to the money order window. You better get a stamp for your letter. Okay. Yeah, what'll it be for you, son? Gonna send your dog away, parcel post? No, sir, not him. I, I want a three-cent stamp. Yeah. Uh, here you are. Thank you. Oh. Uh, Where's the mailbox? Well, I'll take the letter right here. What's the matter, Rags? Hello, oh, Mr. Bradley. Hello. Well, hello, Jerry, my boy. And Rags, old fellow. <laughs> uh, what are you doing at the post office? Is there a sale on stamps? Uh-uh. Why, well, that's funny. I heard they were selling three-cent stamps, two for six cents. They are? Oh, you bet. Why, well, it's a real bargain. Two for six cents. Oh, I sure can. <laughs> There's Patsy over there. Hey, look who's here, Patsy. Oh, hello, Johnny. Greetings, Miss Patsy. <laughs> Looks like the post office is getting a lot of business from the circus. Yes, it does. Oh, say, excuse me a second. I'm going to mail this letter. Well, of course, Miss Patsy. Look, Mr. Bradley, all those pictures on the wall here. Yes. Why, those are pictures of criminals at large, Jerry. Criminals at large? Yes, sir. You see this one? It says, uh, wanted for grand larceny. And then it gives a description of the man. Five feet, nine inches tall, weight 185 pounds, gray hair, age about look, 50. Look, look at this picture. I, I seen him someplace. Uh, which one is it, Jerry? Right here. Oh, yes. Well, 
You think you know who this is? I wouldn't be sure, but he sure looks like someone I've seen someplace. There's a $500 reward for his capture. Let's see what it says about him. Escaped convict, Max Peters. Scar in back of left ear. Are you ready to go back to the lot, Jerry? Well, wait a minute, Patsy. Uh, Jerry thinks he knows who this man is, Patsy. What? Why, that's a criminal. It says he just recently escaped from state's prison. Oh, Jerry, now how would you know him? Well, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure I've seen him someplace. Five feet, seven inches tall, thin brown hair, blue eyes, 140 pounds. It says he served four years of a 20-year sentence. Oh, it's absolutely impossible, Jerry. You've never seen him. He most likely just looks like someone you've seen. I know. I, I may be wrong, but I don't think so. If I could only remember now. It would be very much worth your while with that $500 reward on his head. Does that mean that if I can tell the police where I've seen him or where he is now, I, I'll get the reward? Exactly. <laughs> oh, come on, Jerry. You're always playing detective. Now, wait a minute, Patsy. Wait till I see what else it says about him. But that's all there is, Jerry. I... No, wait. It says uh, he's left-handed and has a sallow complexion. Hmm. Well, that's not much information to track a man down with. I don't know what it is about his face, but I'm sure I know who he is. It's best not to take this too lightly, Patsy. You know, these posters are put up in places like this to help the police. And it's our duty to look them over and be of assistance if we can. Well, I never looked at it that way before. Well, I guess you're right, Johnny. All these men at some time or other are captured and put behind bars. And many times their capture is affected by some alert person who has made a mental note of these posters and then has seen the wanted man and tipped off the police. Well, I can't think of who it is now, but I'm going to keep trying. Oh, that's the boy, Jerry. Well... <laughs> Are you ready to go now? Uh-huh. Come on, Rags. Here, boy. <laughs> Tell you, it would be nice if Jerry would get that reward. It would be nice for anyone to get it. You know, it's very generous of the authorities to offer such large sums of money for the little assistance they ask. I think it's fun playing detective. Oh, it is fun, Jerry. It sharpens your mind, too. Well, then, now you've got something to work on that's really worthwhile. I studied that picture real good, now I'm going to try to remember where I saw that man. Uh-huh.